The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Welcome back to Spain, everybody. We're here at the FIRA in MWC 23. It's just an amazing day. This place is packed. They said 80,000 people. I think it might even be a few more walk-ins. <laughs> I'm Dave Vellante. Lisa Martin is here. David Nicholson. But right now, we have the analyst hot takes with three friends of theCUBE. Chris Lewis is back again with me in the co-host seat. Zias Caravalla, uh, analyst extraordinaire. Great to see you, Z. And Sarvjeet S.J. Johal. <laughs> Good to see you again, SJ. Cube contributor. <laughs> and that's my new name for him. He says, that is his nickname. Guys, thanks for coming back on. We got the all-male panel, sorry. You know, but yeah, yeah. it is what it is. So Zias, uh, this is the first time you've been on at, at MWC. Um, takeaways from the show, hot takes, what are you seeing? Same wine, new bottle? Uh, in a lot of ways, yeah. I mean, I was talking to somebody earlier that if you had come from like MWC five years ago to this year, a lot of the themes are the same. Telco transformation, cloud. I mean, 5G's a little new. Sustainability is certainly a, a newer theme here. Uh, but I think it, it highlights just the, the difficulty I think the telcos have in making this transformation. And I think in some ways I've been unfair to them in some degree because I've picked on them in the past for not moving fast enough. These are, you know, I think these kind of big transformations almost take like a perfect storm of things to come together to happen. Right, and so in the past we had technologies that maybe might have lowered OPEX, but they're hard to deploy, you know, they're vertically integrated, we didn't have the software stacks, but it appears today that between, you know, the cloudification of, of you know, the, uh, you know the going to cloud native, the software stacks, you know, the APIs, the ecosystems, I think we're actually in a position to see this industry finally move forward. Yeah, and Chris, yeah. I mean, you have yeah. served this industry for a long time, and you know, when you, when you do that, you, you, you get briefed as an analyst. You actually realize, wow, there's a lot of really smart people here, and they're actually, they have challenges, they're working through it. So, you know, Zias was saying, he's been tough on the industry. You know, what do you, what do you think about how the telcos have evolved in the last five years? I, I think they've changed enormously. I think the, the, the problem we have is, we're always looking for the, the great change, the big the step change, and there is no big step change in the way they tell you. What telcos deliver to us as individuals, businesses, society, you know, the connectivity piece, that's changed. We get better and better, more reliable connectivity. We're shunting a load more capacity through. What I think has really changed is their attitude to their suppliers, their attitude to their partners, and their attitude to the ecosystem in which they play. Understanding that connectivity is not the end game. Connectivity is part of the emerging end game where it will include storage, compute, connect, and analytics, and everything else. So I think the realization that they are not playing their own game anymore, it's a much more open game, and some things they will continue to do, some things they'll stop doing. We've seen them withdraw from moving into adjacent markets as much as we used to see, so a lot of them in the past went off to try and do uh, movies, media, yeah, and, some, yeah. and a lot went way, way into business IT stuff. Yeah. They've, but they've mainly pulled back from that, and they're focusing on, and let's face it, it's not just a 5G show. The, the fixed environment is unbelievably important. We saw that during the pandemic having that fixed broadband connection, using Wi-Fi, combining with cellular. Now we, we love it, but the problem as an industry is that the users often don't even know the connectivity is there. They only know when it doesn't work, right? If, so if it's not media, and it's not you know, some business services, what is it? Well, it will, in, my, in my view, it will be enabling third parties to deliver the services that will include media, that will include business services, so embedding the connectivity all the way into the application that gets delivered or embedding it so it, the quality mechanisms deliver the gaming much more accurately, or I'm yeah. not a gamer so I can't comment on that, but you know, the, the video quality, if you want to have a higher quality video, will come through better. And those cohorts will pay for that value? They, uh, somebody will pay somewhere along the line. Mm, we that seems fuzzy to me. I we still will pay. I, I, I do think it, it's use case dependent. Like you look at all the work Verizon did at the Super Bowl this year, um, you know, that's a perfect case where they, you know, they could have upsold. Explain the, that, the, I, I'm not familiar with it. What, so so Verizon provided all the 5G in yeah, the okay. Super Bowl. They provided yep. a lot of, um, they provided private connectivity for the coaches to talk to the sidelines. And those, those, that's a mission critical application, right? In the NFL, if one side can't talk, the other side gets shut down. Right. You can't communicate with the quarterback or the coaches. There's a, there's a lot of risk at that. So 
Um, but you know, th there's a case there, though. I think where they could have even made that fan facing, right? And if you're you're paying two thousand bucks to go to a game, would you pay fifty bucks more to have you know a higher tier of bandwidth so you can post things on social? People that go there want to know, they want people to know they were there. Right? Every football game you go to, you can't use your your yeah, your, I know, your right? Self. All right, well, let's talk about developers yeah. because we we saw the eight APIs come out. Um, you know, I think ISVs are going to be, yes. you know, a big part of this. But it's like Dr. Just said, "Hey, eight's better than zero, I guess." Okay, so, but so the innovation is going to come from ISVs and developers, Subji. But what's your, what are your hot takes from this show? And out day two, a day and a half in, almost two days in. Yeah, yeah. This thing that we have talked, I mentioned many times, is skills gravity, right? Skills have gravity. And, and also, to outcompete, you have to how to educate. That's another theme, actually, of my talks is, or my research is, that to push your technology out there to the practitioners, you have to educate them. And that's the only way to democratize your technology. What telcos have been doing is they have been stuck to the proprietary software and proprietary hardware for too long from Nokia's of the world and other vendors like that. So now with the open sourcing of some of the components, ORAN and a few others, right? And they're open source based um, antenna, you know, it's just, antennas are becoming software now. So with, with the advent of these things, which is open source, it helps us democratize that to the outer sort of skirts of the, the practitioners, if you will, and that will bring in more applications, especially first into the IOT space, and then maybe into the core uh, sort of uh, telephony, if you will. So what does a what does a telco developer look like? I mean, all the all the blockchain developers and crypto developers are moving into you know generative AI, right? Yeah. So maybe those worlds come you, together. You'd like to think though that the developers would understand everything's network centric today. So right. you'd like to think they'd understand that how the network responds. You know, you take a simple app like, like Zoom or something, right? If, the, if it notices the bandwidth changes, it should knock down the resolution. If it goes up, it, you know, then you, should, you can add different features and things, and you can make apps a lot smarter that way. Well, G2 and, was saying yeah. today that they did a deal with Mercedes, you know this probably yeah. better than I do, where they're going to embed WebEx in the car, and if you're driving, it'll shut off the camera. Of course. That's I'm a like, very basic example. Uh, but I'm like, know, okay. I'll, I'll give you a better example, But, but is, is, uh, that's my point. Like, isn't there more that we well, can well, way do? Way more. So yeah. you notice down on the SKT stand, the, the little helicopter. It's, yeah, it's a cool. vertical lift helicopter. So it's an ele electric vertical lift helicopter. Just think of that for a second. And then think of the connectivity to control that, to securely control that. And then it was, I was recently at an event with Zeus actually, where we saw an air traffic control system where there was no people manning the tower it was managed by someone remotely with all the cameras around. Them. So managing all of those different elements, we call it IoT, but actually it's, it's way more than what we thought of as IoT. All those components connecting, communicating securely and safely, because I don't want that helicopter coming down on my head, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're in it. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so, okay, so you mentioned uh, uh, sustainability. Everybody's talking about power. I don't know if you guys are, uh, from, you know, have a lot of experience around TCO, but I'm trying to get to, well, is this just because energy costs are so high, and then when the energy becomes cheap again, nobody's going to pay any attention no. to it? Or yeah. is this, is this the, the real deal? So, so one of the issues around the, around the, if we want to experience all that connectivity locally, or that helicopter wants to connect that connectivity, we have to ultimately build denser, more reliable networks. So there's a capex, we're going to put more, more base stations in place, we need more fiber in the ground to support them, Therefore, the energy consumption will go up. So we need to be more efficient in the, in the use of energy. Simple as that. Yep. How much of the how much of the operating expense is is energy? Like what percent of it? Is it ten percent? Is it twenty percent? Is it? Is it? Does anybody know? It depends who you ask, and it depends on the. Uh, the I can't get an answer to that. I mean, it's um, a, in, the in, the in the enterprise. Yeah, in the data, data centers, centers, we have the numbers. I think yeah, it's ten to fifteen. It's ten to yeah. 10, 12 percent, something I, like I that. I think it's is more it, than is that. Is it much yeah. higher? It's, That's what the I'm opex, to I've got a feeling it's thirty percent. I, okay, I, so I, I do think we know. We, I do think we have to get better at understanding how to measure too. You know, like I was talking with John Davidson and Cisco about this. That every rev of silicon they come out with uses more power, but it's a lot more dense. So. On, on the, at the surface you go, well that, that's using a lot more power, but you can consolidate 
10 switches down to two switches. It's faster, yeah. Well, right. Intel was so, on earlier, yeah. talking about how they can intelligently control the cores. But it's based and, off and, workload, right? That's, yeah. that's the thing. And so what are you running over it? How, you know, and so I, I don't think our industry measures that very well. I think we look at things kind of box by box versus look at total yeah. consumption. Well, somebody I, else I in the cube was saying they go full throttle, that the yeah. networks just say, just full throttle everything, yeah. and that obviously has to change from a power yeah. consumption standpoint. I think it's it's sustainability and, and sensory, or sensors from IoT side, they go hand in hand. Just simple examples, like you know, lights in the restrooms, you know, like in the <laughs> public areas, well, if somebody goes in there, it just only then turns on. The same concept is, being applied yeah. to servers and compute and storage and every and to networks, aspect yeah. and yes. to networks as well. Cell towers, yeah. Yeah, yeah so turn they, them off, right? Yeah. So what, the serverless telco? Yeah. No, no, right. no, 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 so no, no, the, no, 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 cell towers are not used. Well, well no, I'm saying, right, but like serverless, you're not paying for the compute. Exactly. Yeah. You're not using it. Yeah. yeah. You so know, so. it is serverless from the economics point of view. Yes, it's like that, you know, so. When it, it, it goes to the lowest level, almost like sleep on our laptops, sleep level, when some, you need more power, more compute. Um, but I mean, some of that stuff's been up. in network equipment for a long time, it just never really got turned on. So. I want to ask you about yeah. private networks. You wrote a piece, uh, Athenet, uh, Athenet was acquired by HPE right after Dell announced a relationship with Athenet, yeah. which was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so a good move, good judo move by, by HPE. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and I asked Dell about it and they said, look, we're open. Uh, they said the right things, we'll see, yeah. but I think it's up to well, HPE. Well, on the network inside Dell is. Right. Yeah. yeah, okay, so, yeah. okay, cool. So, but you said something in that article you wrote on Silicon Angle that a lot of people feel like a, a, a P5G is going to basically replace wireless or cannibalize wireless. You said you didn't agree with that. Explain why. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, sorry, yeah, I yeah. said wireless. No, yeah. that's, I mean, that's, I hear, it's ridiculous. Pat Gelsinger said that in his last VMworld, which I, I thought was completely irresponsible. That it was going to cannibalize. It can cannibalize Wi-Fi globally is what he said, right? Now he had yeah. Verizon on stage with him, so. You know, <laughs> Wi-Fi's too inexpensive and well, Wi -Fi flexible. Is it's yeah. too it's embedded it's, it's, as well. It's, it's, it's reached near, embedded yeah, 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 right, right. reach near ubiquity, it's unlicensed, so a lot of businesses don't want to manage their own spectrum, right? And it's, it's, it's great for, you know, this, right? It's, it, it does the job, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, for, for casual Not connectivity. Today. <laughs> well, the, well it, it does for the most part, right? For the now, most part. Yeah, if it's but never at these events. If it's, if it's engineered correctly, it will, <laughs> yeah. right? Where you need private 5G is when reliability is an absolute must. So, you know, Chris, you and I visited um, uh, the Port of Rotterdam, yeah, right? Exactly. So yeah. they're putting 5G, private 5G there, but there's metal containers everywhere, right? And that's going to disrupt it. And so there are certain use cases where it makes I've sense. I've been in your basement. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you got some pretty intense yeah, equipment there. Yeah. You're going to have private 5G in, but your, for, in your house? Uh, for carpeted <laughs> offices, you know, it does not make sense to bring private, it just, it, the, the economics don't make any sense. And, uh, you know, it, it runs hot, it's... Uh, so where's it going to be used? Give, it, give us some examples of, of where well, we should be looking well, the, for... The early for ones are obviously in, in mining, in, uh, say, in ports, in airports, in, small, in broader in cities, because you've got so many moving parts in there. And always think about it, very expensive moving parts. You know, the cranes in the, in the, in the ports, a normally expensive piece of kit you're moving that, all that trust logistics around, so managing that over a distance, where the Wi-Fi won't work over the distance, and then, and in mining, we've got these enormous expensive trucks moving around. I, I think a great new use case, though, so the, the Cleveland Browns, actually the first NFL team, to use it for facial recognition to enter the stadium. So instead of having to even pull your phone out, it says, hey Dave Vellante, you've got four tickets, can we check you all in? And you just walk through. You can apply that to airports. You could do, put that in a hotel. You could walk up and retail, check Retail. Yeah, you know? retail. Yeah. And so I, I think video, um, video, uh, real-time video analytics, and uh, I think it's a perfect use but case you, for that. But you don't need 5G to do that. You could do that through, a, through another mechanism, couldn't you? Uh, you could do, Wired, depending on how mobile you want it yeah, to. Exactly. Like in a stadium, yeah. you're pulling those things in and out all the time, you're moving them around and things, so. Yeah, but yeah, you're I, coming in at a static point. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I would take the contrary, contrary view here. I, I, See, we I, can't I, even I, agree on that. I think, <laughs> you yeah. agree Good, I love it, let's go. Yeah. I, I, I believe the, the, the reliability of connection is very important, right? And the moving parts, what are the moving parts in, in Wi-Fi? We have the, the NIC cards, you know, there's Wi-Fi cards in, in these suckers, right? In any machine, you know, they're bigger in size and the radios for, for 5G are smaller in size. So, miniaturization is important part of the whole sort of progress to the future, right? And, so and I, cost, I think 5G, right? Cost as well, yes, cost as well, but cost, we know that it goes down with time, right? So we are already, talk, already talking about 
6G and the 5G stuff will be do you know, cheap but pretty so soon. SG, sorry, so one of the big boom areas at the moment is 4G, is 4, is 4G LTE because the component price have come down so much, they're, they're, it's affordable, you can afford to bring it all together. Yeah. People don't, because we're still on 5G, we're not S 5G standalone everywhere, you're not going to get a consistent service. So those components are unbelievably important. The skill sets of the people doing the integration to bring them all together are unbelievably important. And, and, the, and the business case within the, within the, the business. So I, I was talking to one of the heads of one of the big retail outlets in the UK, and I said, when are you going to do 5G in the stores? He said, well, why would I tear out all the Wi-Fi? You know, I've got perfectly functioning no, no, actually, Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Can't it's already the there. Case. But I think the technology which disappears in front of you, that's the best technology. Like, you don't worry about it, you don't think it's there. Wi-Fi, we think, we think about that, like it's there. And I do think Wi-Fi 5G switching's got to get easier too. Like, for most users, you don't know which is better. <laughs> you don't even know how to test it. Yeah. And to your point, it, it, it does need to be invisible where the user doesn't need to think about it. Right? Invisible, you see, we came back to invisible. We talked about that yesterday. You know, yeah. it, well, it, telecom should be invisible. It, it, and, and it should be, you know? You don't want to be thinking about the telecom, but at the same time, Telecoms want to be more visible. They want to be visible like Netflix, don't they? I, so. I still don't see the path. It's fuzzy to me, the path of, of how they're not going to repeat what happened with the over-the-top uh, providers, if they're invisible. Well, if you think about the, what, tel what telcos deliver to, to consumers, to businesses, then extending that connectivity into your home to help you support, to secure and extend your connection into ZS's basement, whatever it is. Yeah. There's obviously that. It's awesome setup down there. there. <laughs> and then in, in the business environment, there's a big change going on from the old MPLS networks, the old rigid structures of networks, to SD-WAN, where the, the control point is, mo is moved outside, which can be under the control of the telco, could be under the control of a, a third-party integrator. So there's, there's a lot changing. I think we, we obsess about the, the relative role of the telco. The demand is phenomenal for connectivity. So, so address that, fulfill that, and if they do that, then they'll start to build trust in other areas. But don't you, I, don't you think they're going to address that and they fulfill that? I mean, they're they good at it. That's, yeah. their, that's their wheelhouse. And it's a $1.6 trillion market, right? So it's not to be sniffed at. So be, be share, that's, that's fixed and mobile together, obviously. But you know, it's, a, it's a big market. And you know, do we keep changing? If, as long as the service is good, we don't, we don't move away from it. So back to the APIs, the yeah. eight <laughs> APIs. Right, I mean. Eight APIs is a joke, actually, almost. <laughs> I think they released it a little too early. Um, they they released the release on the main stage, you know, like, what, what is this, right? But, but of course they will grow in, into hundreds and thousands of APIs, but, but they have to spend a lot of time and effort in, in, in that sort of context. I actually like to see the GSMA work with like AWS and Microsoft and VMware and like software companies and create some standardization across their APIs. Yeah, they, right. I spoke to them, GSMA guys. Trying to reinvent. Is that not what they're doing? No, they said, no, they said we, we are not in the business of defining standards. And they, had, they used a different term, <laughs> right. not, not standard, <laughs> yeah. seriously. Like I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> but but let's was, face it, there aren't just eight APIs out there. There's, there's so many of them. The TM Forum's been defining them in its open data architecture. You know, the telcos themselves are defining them. The standards we, we talked about Twilio earlier with, with Danielle. Yeah. There's a lot of APIs out there, the, but you, the, the consistency of APIs, so we can bring them together to bring all the different services together that will support us in our different lives, is, is really important. I think telcos will do it, it's in their interest. In it. All right, guys, we've got to wrap. Let's go around the horn here, uh, starting with Chris, Zias, and then Sarbjeet, you bring us home. Number one hot take from Mobile World Congress, MD, MWC 23, day two. My, my favorite hot take is the, the willingness of all the participants who have been traditional telco players, you looked inwardly at the industry, looking outside for help, for partnerships, and to build an ecosystem, an open, a more open ecosystem, which will address our requirements. Yes? Yeah, I was going to talk about ecosystem too. I think for the first time ever, when I met with the telcos here, I think they're actually, I don't think they know how to get there yet, but they're at least aware of the fact that they need to understand how to build a big ecosystem around them. So if you think back like, you know, 50 years ago, IBM and compute was sort of the center of everything in your company and then the ecosystem surrounded it. I think today with digital transformation being network centric, the telcos actually have the opportunity to be that center of excellence and then build an ecosystem around them. I think the SIs are actually in a really interesting place to help them do that because they understand everything top to bottom. But I, you know, I, Pre-pandemic, I was—I'm not sure the telcos really understand. I think they understand it today. I'm just not sure they know how to get there. Mm. Sarbjeet, 
I've seen a lot of uh, ORAN demos and testing companies, and I'm amazed by it. But everything is turning into software, almost everything. Uh, the, the, soft, the, the parts which are not have, have turned into software, I mean, every, they, they will soon, but everybody says that we need the hardware to run something, right? But that hardware, in my view, is getting miniaturized and it's becoming smaller and smaller. The antennas are becoming smaller. The, the equipment is getting smaller. That means the cost on the physical part, physicality of the assets is going down, but the cost on the software side will go up for telcos in future, and software is a messy business. Not everybody can do it, so only few will survive, I believe. So that's what we're Software to find telco. Yes. Um, so I'm on a mission. I've, I've been looking for the for the monetization path. Yeah. And what I haven't seen yet is you know you want to you want to follow the money, follow the data. I say. So I'm, uh, next two days I'm going to be looking for that data play, that potential, the way in which this industry is going to break down the data silos. I think there's this potential gold mine there, but um, I haven't figured it out yet. That's a, a subject for another day, yeah. David. Guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. You guys are extraordinary you know, partners of theCUBE, friends and, and great analysts. And uh, congratulations and thank you for all you do. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, this is a wrap on day two, MWC 23. Go to siliconangle.com for all the news. We're, Rob Hof and team are just covering all the news. John Furrier's in the Palo Alto studio, rocking all that news, taking all that news and putting it on video. Go to thecube.net, you'll see everything on demand. Thanks for watching, this is a wrap on day two. We'll see you tomorrow.